or you just make some finger puppets. Hi guys, it's Katie from Yarn Society. Today we're going to crochet together Poppy the Panda. She's about five and a half inches tall when made with worsted weight yarn. You can make her in any color you'd like. I chose gray and white for the video to be a little easier to see. You can leave her plain or you can add a fun little headband or a little flower accent to her. I'm not including the flower tutorial in this pattern because I already made a video for it. So I am going to link the video down below and pop one up here as well. We're going to get started with supplies, then we'll move on to the crochet pattern next. To get started with supplies, grab two different colors of a worsted weight yarn. Here I'm using Comfy Worsted. These are the same yarn, they're just different labels. One's from Knit Picks, one's We Crochet but they are the same company. So any worsted will work great. You'll wanna grab an E three and a half millimeter crochet hook, two 12 millimeter safety eyes. These are the plastic safety eyes with the backings, an 18 millimeter safety nose with the back, some polyfill stuffing, scissors, some pins for assembly. If you like to use stitch markers, grab those and then a yarn needle. We're gonna get started by making the eyes. So grab your gray, black, or whatever color you chose and your crochet hook and a stitch marker if you're using it. We are gonna start out by making six single crochet into a magic circle. So do that however you know how. And if you don't, we can go through it here together. I'm gonna to start out by making a slip knot, wrapping the yarn around two fingers, pushing the back piece to the front, and then pulling up on that slip knot. I'm gonna insert my hook. I'm gonna chain two. I'm gonna place six single crochet in that second chain from the hook. And this is how I'll start my magic circle. I will link a bunch of magic circle videos in the description box below. So if you need help finding your favorite way, you can check those out. Here's my third single crochet into that same stitch. Four, five, and six. For this pattern, we don't wanna close up our hole. We wanna leave it because we are gonna place our safety eye in there. So I'm just gonna close it up a tad I'm gonna place my stitch marker. I placed mine on the last stitch of the round, and if you place yours on the first, feel free to do it however you are comfortable. So here I have six stitches, two, three, four, five, six. This little bit here is from my slip knot, so ignore that. We're gonna go into our first stitch. For round two, we are going to make three half double crochet in that first stitch, and then we'll single crochet in the rest. So in that first stitch, we're gonna go underneath both loops and we're gonna make three half double crochet. And I also have a video on this if you need help. To make our half double, we're gonna yarn over, place our hook in that first stitch, yarn over again, pull through. You'll have three loops on the hook, yarn over and pull through all three loops. Now we're gonna make our second half double crochet into that same stitch. So here's our second half double crochet. Go ahead and make your third right into that same stitch. Now we're gonna single crochet in the next five stitches. Here is single crochet one, move over a stitch, single crochet two, in our next, a single crochet three. Here is four, and then I always end with the stitch with my stitch marker. So here's five. So that's it for the eye. We are going to tighten up that middle just a little bit. You wanna leave a good size hole for your eye. We're gonna leave a little tail. Give that a snip. And we're gonna do something called a seamless join. So instead of fastening off, just pull your yarn straight out Grab your yarn needle, weave that yarn into your yarn needle, 
and then we're going to find our stitch next to our last stitch. So if you pull up on your stitch, you'll see that this is the one we worked into and you want to go one to your left. Place your needle under both loops and then go back through that last stitch that you made and go right down the middle of the V. Pull your needle through and then I like to give it a tug. This gives your work a seamless look so you don't have that jagged edge for your eye. We want to weave in both ends of the yarn. So weave in your first piece and then weave in that second piece. Once both pieces are weaved in, go ahead and cut off that extra yarn, grab one of your safety eyes, these are 12 millimeter safety eyes, and place it in the middle hole that you left. You're not going to secure the back just yet, you're going to place it to the side. Your three half double crochet will kind of leave a little bit of a point. This just gives the panda eye a little droopier look when we place them on the head and I will show you that when we get there. At this point you want to make another eye, so rewind the video, make one more eye, insert your plastic safety eye and put it on to the side and just make sure that you don't secure the back. We are going to get started on the head, so grab your second color, for me it's white. I have my hook and a stitch marker and I'm going to get started with a magic circle with six single crochet into the magic circle. And again, I will be putting videos for all the stitches and all the magic circle tutorials, but for now, I am just going to make a slip knot. So I'm going to pull that back piece to the front and pull up on my tail, insert my hook, and I'm going to chain two. I'm going to make six single crochet into that second chain from the hook, and this is going to be my magic circle. This is probably the easiest way if you're just starting out to learn how to make a magic circle and then there are many more ways you can achieve the same exact thing. So you kind of find the, the technique that you like the most. From here I'm going to tighten this circle all the way, close it up, I'm going to place my stitch marker on the last stitch of the round and again you can place it wherever you'd like. Here we have six stitches. You're going to count your V's, and that first little bit is just my slip knot. So I'm going to ignore that piece and I'm going to go straight into my first stitch. For round two, we're going to make an increase in each stitch around. That means two single crochet into the same stitch. Here I have single crochet one, and single crochet two. I'm going to move over a stitch and make my second increase. Move over and make my third increase, just placing two single crochet into the same stitch. Here is increase four, increase five, and here is my last stitch. I'm making my last increase of this round. So now I should have 12 stitches. I'm going to change my stitch marker. Go ahead and give this middle another little cinch. You want to make sure that it's tight. For round three, we're going to make an increase in the first stitch, single crochet into the next stitch, and we'll be repeating this all the way around. So first stitch, we're going to make an increase two single crochet into the same stitch. Then I'm going to move over a stitch and make one single crochet. Move over, we're going to make our second increase, we're making six total. Move over a stitch and make another single crochet. Then we'll be making our third increase in the next stitch. Move over, make another single crochet. Here is our fourth increase. Move over, single crochet. 
and then we'll make our fifth increase to single crochet into the same stitch. Another single crochet and then our sixth increase ending with a single crochet in our last stitch. We will have 18 stitches. Change your stitch marker, go ahead and tighten up that middle one last time and for round four we're going to make an increase in the first stitch, single crochet in the next two and we will repeat that six times. Here in that first stitch we're going to make an increase Move over, single crochet one, move over, single crochet two. Then we're going to start this over. We have an increase, single crochet one, move over, single crochet two, and then repeat this again. This is our third increase. Single crochet one, single crochet two, move over here is our fourth increase, single crochet one and two. Next stitch we'll make our fifth increase, single crochet one and single crochet two and then we will make our sixth and final increase and then we will single crochet in the last two stitches. You'll start to notice that there is a pattern and it gets pretty easy as long as you are counting as you go. Here we'll have 24 stitches, change your stitch marker. If you're just starting out I would suggest to count each round and here I'm just going to show you how to count your rounds as well. So this is round one, round two, round three, round four, and now we'll be starting on round five, just in case you're not sure how to count your rounds. For round five, we're going to increase in the first stitch, single crochet in the next three. We'll do that six times total. Here is increase one, and then we'll single crochet in the next three. So here's one, two, three, and then we're gonna increase for our second time. Single crochet in the next three. Here's our third increase. single crochet in the next three, our fourth increase, single crochet in the next three, our fifth increase, single crochet in the next three, our sixth and final increase, single crochet in your last three stitches. After this round you'll have 30 stitches so go ahead and count those and then you can change your stitch marker. For round six we are going to increase in the first stitch, single crochet in the next four stitches. Here is our first increase, then single crochet one, two, three, and four, our second increase, single crochet in the next four stitches, our 
our third increase, single crochet in the next four stitches, our fourth increase, single crochet in the next four stitches, Here is our fifth increase, and our sixth increase. Finish with four single crochet. At the end of this round, you'll have 36 stitches. Change your stitch marker. For round seven, we are going to continue on with this pattern that we're doing. And we are gonna be increasing in the first stitch, single crochet in the next five stitches. Doing this six times total. Here's increase one, our first increase, single crochet in the next five stitches. We have one, two, three, four, and five. And then here is our second increase. Single crochet in the next five stitches. Our third increase, single crochet in the next five stitches. Our fourth increase, single crochet in the next five. Our fifth increase, single crochet in the next five. And then our sixth increase, single crochet in your last five stitches. At the end of this round, you will have 42 stitches. For round eight, we are going to increase in the first stitch, single crochet in the next six stitches, and we'll be doing this six times total. Here is our first increase, single crochet in the next six stitches. And this round, I'm gonna let you count on your own as I'm sure you've gotten the rhythm down.
here's our last stitch at the end of round eight you will have 48 stitches make sure that you have 48 because we're going to start a few single crochet rounds and you don't want to have the wrong number of stitches so for round nine through 15 we are going to single crochet in the next 48 stitches i'm going to do the first round with you because i want to show you a little trick that i have for counting our rows a little bit easier so all i'm going to do is just single crochet all the way around to the next 48 stitches when you get about three or four stitches in grab another stitch marker and place it on that round on a stitch horizontally this way when we go back to count it will be a lot easier so continue place that stitch marker and then just continue on with what you are doing just going all the way around here we are just chugging along single crocheting this is round nine as i was crocheting i did notice that there was a knot in my yarn and it's a little difficult at this point to take out any knots so if you are crocheting and you see a knot most times if you just continue crocheting the knot will stay in the back and because we're doing amigurumi and we're closing this up you won't even see that knot so just continue crocheting as you would I want to say a quick thanks to you for coming to this crochet along and crocheting with me. Feel free to mute me <laughs> at any point as I count a lot. Um, this is geared for a beginner, so I want to be able to show you and uh, count along with you. I just think it makes it a little easier. Okay, we finished. We are on the last stitch of round nine. I'm going to change my stitch marker like I usually would. Make sure you still have 48 stitches because you don't want to skip a stitch or add one. And then from here, I'm going to crochet past this stitch marker because I want to show you how we're going to count. So we are going to crochet from round 9 through 15. And when you, I'm just going to pull out here for a second. When you have your stitch marker here, you know that this is round 9 because you marked it. Then you can count round 10, 11, 12, 13. It's a lot easier than having to start all the way from the beginning to count. So if you like this trick, pop that stitch marker in there. It'll make your life a little easier. So I'm going to go ahead and continue crocheting to round 15, and we will meet back at the end of round 15. So you do the same. We're on our last few stitches of round 15. At the end of this round, you'll still have 48. So go ahead and change your stitch marker. So this is what we have so far. For round 16, we're going to do something a little different. We are going to start with a decrease, and I do something called an invisible decrease, and I have a video I'll also put down below. So we'll use those first two stitches for the decrease, and then we'll single crochet in the next six. We'll do that six times total. For my invisible decrease, I'm going to take my hook and go under the, the front loop of the first stitch and the front loop of the second. I'm going to yarn over and pull through. I have two loops on the hook, yarn over and pull through. So that's my first invisible decrease. Now I'm going to single crochet in the next six stitches. Here we're going to do our second decrease, go under the front loop, then under the front loop again, yarn over, pull through, yarn over and pull through. Now we're going to single crochet in the next six stitches. And again, I have a video going a lot slower on the decrease, so check that out if you need to. Here is our third decrease. Single crochet in the next six. Here's our fourth decrease. Single crochet in the next six stitches. Really quick, I just want to mention that you want to keep your yarn up to your hook because if you leave it loose and you go into your stitch, you're going to make a hole in there. So make sure that you have it right up to your hook and then you can make your single crochet.
our next decrease. We're single crocheting in the next six stitches. And then our sixth decrease. Single crochet in the last six stitches. At the end of round 16, you'll have 42 stitches and we're starting to bring our head in a little bit. So for round 17, we're gonna decrease in the first two and then we're gonna single crochet in the next five. Here's our first decrease, single crochet in the next five stitches. Our second decrease, single crochet in the next five stitches. Pick out any crazy lint that your yarn picks up because I feel like there's always something floating around. Our third decrease, single crochet in the next five. Our fourth decrease, single crochet in the next five. Our fifth decrease, single crochet in the next five. And then our final decrease, single crochet in the last five stitches. You will have 36 stitches at this point. Go ahead and change your stitch marker and then you'll wanna grab an extra stitch marker or a safety pin or something that you can secure your working yarn with because we're gonna place the nose and the eyes at this point. We're gonna get started by placing our nose first. So here's my 18 millimeter safety nose. In my pattern, this is just a, um, just like a little reference guide, but it says to place my nose between round 11 and 12. I like to see where my stitch marker is and then center that in the front. So I'm gonna count between round 11 and 12 and I'm just gonna use a pin to keep track of where that is. So here's 11 and 12. I'm just gonna place my pin in the middle and then I'm just gonna double check that I'm in the right spot. Okay, so once I'm happy with how the pin looks, I'm gonna just take the pin out and place in my nose. This is a pretty big nose, so you really have to get it in there. So just take your time and get that nose into the other side. I'm not gonna secure it just yet because I wanna place my eyes and make sure that everything looks okay before I put on the back. We're gonna grab those safety eyes that we prepared and we wanna leave three stitches open on each side. So we're gonna go between the same round 11 and 12, but you have to move your nose because there is a hidden stitch here. So we're gonna do one, two, three, and then you're gonna move over and put your eye in that fourth stitch. We're gonna do the same on this side, using our pins to kind of get an idea of how things will look. And then once I'm happy, I'm gonna place my eyes in that spot. Feel free to move things around if you don't like the placings that I chose. You can always put your eyes higher or 
closer, it's totally up to you. I'm gonna put my other eye in before I secure anything. And then we're gonna notice where we had those half double crochets. So that's where we have those extra stitches. You can either have them going up. I like them to go down, but do whatever you think looks the cutest to you. Wrap the plastic backings for your eyes and your nose. I'm gonna start with my nose first. I'm gonna place that on there. And then I like to do like a seesaw motion just to get that back on. Next, you can go ahead and add the backings to your eyes. I use that same seesaw motion. And then once you have that all secured, we're gonna go back to crocheting round 18. For round 18, we're gonna make one decrease, single crochet in the next four stitches. We'll be doing the six times total. Here's our first decrease. Single crochet in the next four stitches. Our second decrease. Single crochet in the next four. Our third decrease. When you have the eyes and nose in, it kind of changes the way you hold things. So just get adjusted if you have to. Single crochet in the next four. Our next decrease. Single crochet in the next four. Our next decrease. Single crochet in the next four. Here's our last decrease, single crochet in the last four stitches. At the end of this round, we will have 30 stitches. We can change our stitch marker. Moving on to round 19, we're gonna make one decrease and then single crochet in the next three. We'll do this six times total. So here's our first decrease single crochet in the next three we're getting there you guys we're almost there our second decrease single crochet in the next three i'm going to let you guys count the decrease single crochet in the next three until the end Okay, we're reaching our last stitch here. You will have 24 stitches at this point. Change your stitch marker. I'm having such trouble right here. Okay, and then I am gonna start stuffing so you can either leave a really long tail on your working yarn or just add a stitch marker. You don't wanna lose your spot, so just make sure that your yarn is safe. I like to start when my head is starting to close. I just grab a big fluffy piece and I stuff it in there. And then I like to almost like burrow a hole in the middle because I like to place my next um, bits of fluff in the middle there. 
you want to make sure that your nose is in there straight and your eyes are in the stuffing straight because sometimes those can look a little wonky if you don't straighten them and get them settled in the polyfill. From here, I don't stuff too much. I still want to be able to squeeze everything. So I'm going to continue crocheting and then I will be adding bits every round. So you'll see how I do that here. If you have a certain way that you like to stuff, feel free to do that as well. For round 20, we're making a decrease and then we're single crocheting the next two and we're doing that six times. It gets a little weird when you add the stuffing to hold so just do your best like that <laughs> throws me off so here is our first decrease and then we're going to single crochet in the next two try not to get your stuffing in there as well so we're going to make our second decrease single crochet in the next two Our third decrease, single crochet in the next two. Here is our next decrease, single crochet in the next two, and then continue that pattern till the end. We're reaching our last stitch here. At the end of round 20, we'll have 18 stitches. So I'm gonna leave myself a lot of slack on my yarn and I'm just gonna add a tiny bit more of stuffing to that middle hole that I made. I'll only have about one more chance to stuff after the next round. So just keep that in mind while you're stuffing. We're going to start round 21. 21 is just a decrease and then a single crochet. And now we're going to make one decrease and then a single crochet, decrease, single crochet. We're just going to continue that pattern all the way around. Going into our last stitch, we will have 12 stitches at this point, and this is our last chance to stuff. So make sure that after this point, you're happy with how your head looks. I'm just gonna add a little bit more. And then I smush and smush <laughs> until I think I'm happy. So once you're happy with your stuffing, we're gonna do our last round, round 22. We're gonna make six decreases all around. So you're gonna do your first decrease, then you'll make your second decrease, and then just continue decreasing until you reach the end. Okay, once you've reached your last stitch, you can take out your stitch marker. We're gonna leave a long tail because we're gonna close up this hole and then weave through the yarn.
So grab your yarn. You're going to fasten off by yarning over and pulling it all the way through. Grab your yarn needle. We're going to weave our yarn into our needle. And now we're going to sew the head shut. So you want to find your last stitch. Here was the fasten off and here's my last stitch. So I'm going to count backwards. Here is my first stitch. I'm going to go behind that front loop and I'm going to pull my needle through. I'm going to go to my second stitch, go behind the front loop and pull it through. I like to turn the head so that the stitch is in front of me as I'm doing this and I'm going down the third. Here's the fourth stitch, the fifth, and then my last stitch here. You will have that little fastened off bit, but don't worry about that. So here we're going to close up this hole, but you're also going to keep an eye on where the hole was closing. If you place your yarn needle right there, it'll kind of open up a little. You want to weave your yarn needle through that hole. So go up through the head, pull it tight, and now you'll get a flat bottom on your head. If you don't want to get the flat bottom, it really isn't a big deal because we're going to put our body there anyway. So if you want to sew it a different way, feel free to do that. I'm just going to weave in my yarn really well through my head. Snip off that excess yarn and then your head is done. Look, she's so cute, even just with her eyes. We're going to move on to the ears next. We're moving on to the ear next, so grab your first color. So it was gray for me. We're going to start out by making four single crochet into a magic circle. So go ahead and start your magic circle. I'm going to start with a slip knot and I'm going to chain two. I'm going to single crochet four times into the second chain from the hook. And then I'm going to tighten up that middle circle. I'm going to place my stitch marker on the last stitch of the round. And then here we're only starting with four stitches. So you just want to make sure you find your first stitch. And for me, it's right here. For round two, we're going to make an increase in each stitch around. So it'll be four times. So this is increase one. I'm going to move over and make another increase. That means two single crochet. Move over for my third increase. And then make my fourth increase. I'm going to change my stitch marker. I'm going to tighten up that middle circle. And then for round three, we're going to increase in the first stitch, single crochet in the next. Make your first, oops, make your first increase. Move over and make a single crochet. Here's our second increase. Move over, single crochet. Our third increase. single crochet and then our last increase and single crochet. You will have 12 stitches at this point. When you're working with smaller increases of yarn like we started with four, your work starts to turn in on itself. You just want to make sure that you turn it the right way. For round four, we're going to increase in the first stitch, single crochet in the next two stitches. So we have our first increase, single crochet one, single crochet two, and then we will increase in the next, single crochet in the next two, Here's our third increase, single crochet in the next two, and our fourth and last increase, single crochet in the next two. 
So here's a good example of our work turning in on itself. It just wants to go towards my finger, but I need to push it out so the stitches are facing the right way. At this point, you have 16 stitches. For round five, we're gonna make one decrease, single crochet in the next two stitches. Make sure you turn your work the right way because it keeps turning in. Here is our second decrease. Single crochet in the next two. Our third decrease. Single crochet in the next two. And then our last decrease, end with two single crochet. You're gonna have 12 stitches at the end of this round, and that's actually the end of the ear. We'll leave a long tail. We're gonna use this for assembly, so make sure you leave a long one. And then we're gonna fasten off our ear. You can yarn over and pull through. You can tuck in that extra piece of yarn and then we're going to close up this ear. I like to close up my open-ended pieces so if you'd like to do this you can grab your yarn needle, weave that through. And this is a little bit of a jagged piece so I just go find my last stitch and I move over one and kind of tuck in that little piece. From here I'm just going to go back and forth and grab a few stitches and close up my ear. And again, you don't have to do this. For me, it just makes assembly easy. I'm gonna go back and forth through my stitches to close up my ear. And that's it. You can put this guy to the side, rewind the video because we wanna have two ears and make your second ear and then we'll meet back for the feet. Moving on to foot number one, I just wanna show you that we are making foot one and then that will be a short little foot and then for foot two, we're gonna continue the same pattern, but we're not gonna fasten off. We're gonna keep going because we're gonna connect the feet and make the whole body into one piece. For now, we're gonna start with foot one and then we'll make foot two second. Grab your, your first color. For foot one, we're gonna single crochet five times into a magic circle. So this is a different way that I do a magic circle. And if you'd like, just do the slip knot, chain two, and make five single crochet into a magic circle. So here I have five stitches. I'm gonna close up that middle hole. It's gonna fan my stitches out a little bit. Sometimes those stitches can go inward. I'm gonna place a stitch marker on the last stitch of my round. And then for round two, we're gonna increase in each stitch around five times. We're gonna increase in each stitch. Going into my last stitch, make my last increase. You will have 10 stitches at this point. Moving on to round three, we're gonna do something a little different. We're gonna single crochet, but we're gonna do the back loop only. We're gonna go on into the back loop only. This is the front loop facing you and the back loop towards the back of the room. You're gonna place your hook underneath that back loop and just single crochet in each stitch around. Your work will also start to turn in on you a bit and you want to make sure that you turn your work so it's facing the right way. If you see the V stitch, you know your stitches are the right way. If you see a line across the middle, you know that that's the wrong way. So we have this little ridge here. That's what our back loop gives us. We still have 10 stitches. Moving on to round four and five, we are gonna single crochet all the way around. But we are gonna single crochet underneath both loops. So we're going back to how we usually crochet. So 
but just crochet all the way around and you'll continue to have 10 stitches for each round. You'll have to tell me in the comments below if this is your first amigurumi or if you have an amigurumi obsession like I do. <laughs> Okay, we're gonna move on to round five, so change your stitch marker, and then single crochet all the way around again. Okay, so we're chugging along here and we're almost at the end this is it for foot one we're gonna fasten off so you can leave a, like a good amount of yarn it doesn't have to be super long fasten off i like to give that a little tug just to keep it tight and then you can stuff in that piece you can take out your stitch marker we're gonna put this to the side what you want to do is make foot number two. You're going to do the exact same pattern, but do not fasten off. Just hold on and wait for me and we will continue on with the next part of the video. I made foot number two and this is the end of round five. We're not going to fasten off. We're just going to make sure we have 10 stitches and we're going to change our stitch marker. We are going to connect both of our feet. So this is considered round six, and for round six, we're just gonna single crochet into 20 stitches, 10 on one foot, 10 on the other. Grab your foot number one, pull up to see which was the last stitch that was taken, and you're gonna move over a stitch and put your hook right into that stitch. This feels super awkward, but once you get it connected, it'll feel a lot better. Once you have your hook in place, get set up with your yarn, Ignore that hanging piece from foot one. You're going to make a single crochet. So you're going to take your hook. I like to just pull this piece up. It makes it feel more natural. You're going to yarn over and pull through. You're going to have two loops on your hook like normal. Yarn over and pull through. So now foot one and two are connected. You can let that guy just go in the air and continue to crochet around that foot number one. I was so intimidated to learn this technique and once I did, I was like, oh, okay. <laughs> as long as you get that first stitch, you're, you're pretty good to go. Okay, so here I'm hitting my last stitch because I do have to remember that that little bit at the end is my fasten off. And from here, you want to see where is my first stitch that I started because this all looks very confusing. But if you simply pull up on your stitch, you'll see that this was your stitch taken and you're going to move over to your next stitch here. Just to show you a little clearer, this is our stitch that was taken. You're going to place your hook underneath this one here. Make a single crochet to connect that part of your foot and then continue to single crochet all the way around. We're continuing to single crochet and I'm just gonna throw another curveball at you. We are gonna change colors at the end of this round. So I'm gonna show you how. I am single crocheting and I'm gonna go into my last stitch. I'm going to go slow. I'm going to pull up a loop. So now I have two loops on my hook. I'm going to put this down a second and grab my other color of yarn. Once I have my yarn, I'm going to tie a knot around my gray. I'm going to pull my white yarn all the way down. And then I'm going to drop my gray and get set up with my white. 
I'm gonna yarn over with my white. I still like to hold it in the back even though it's a knot. I'm gonna yarn over and pull through. So now my old stitch is gray, but I have my white yarn to start with. So it's a really easy way to change colors in crochet. Change your stitch marker. At the end of this round, connecting our feet, we will have 20 stitches. So you wanna make sure that you count to make sure that you have 20 stitches. And I wanna show you this thing here that happens. If you pull up on the stitch, you see that this is the one that was last crocheted into and you want to count the stitch right next to it. This stitch can sometimes be really small and look somewhat hidden underneath your new stitch, like your last stitch of the round. Make sure that you count each stitch and that you have 20 stitches. Okay, we wanna close up this middle hole that we have between our feet so grab your yarn needle. We're gonna close this hole up. Go underneath two stitches on one side and two stitches on the other. You're gonna use that tail from foot one and just go through two or three times and pull tight to close up that hole. On my last pass, I'm gonna go a little slower. I'm gonna get that little loop and I'm just gonna put my yarn needle through the loop to make a knot. Now you can see that the hole is no longer there. You can stuff that little tail bit in one of the feet and then we'll continue crocheting round seven. So you're gonna have this extra piece of gray yarn and we can cut that off in a minute. I just wanna do a few stitches first. So starting with your white yarn, we're gonna single crochet in the next 20 stitches. So you made sure to count and you know that you have 20 stitches. It's my last stitch used. I'm gonna go into my next stitch here. And just continue to crochet all the way around. If this was all going a little too fast for you, in the description box below, I have directions on how you can slow down the video. Once you're a few stitches in, you can cut off that extra gray yarn tuck it into a foot, and then you can continue to single crochet until the end. Going into our last stitch, you should still have 20 stitches. Change your stitch marker. For round eight, we are gonna do one increase, single crochet in the next three stitches, and we'll do that five times. Here's our first increase. Single crochet in the next three stitches. Our second increase, single crochet in the next three. And I'm gonna let you continue to count your increase and then your three single crochets till the end. Working into our last stitch here, you will have 25 stitches. Change your stitch marker. For round nine, we're gonna single crochet in the next 25 stitches. So I'm gonna let you do that and then we'll meet back for the next round. Working into my last single crochet here, we're still gonna have 25 stitches. I wanna pause here and show you how you would count these rounds. That little ridge, that's round three, right above the ridge. And we know that round seven, we changed our color. So if you wanted to start from the white, you would know that's round seven, eight, and nine. And now we'll be starting on round 10. So round 10, we're gonna increase in the first stitch, single crochet in the next four. Here is increase one. Single crochet in the next four stitches. Here 
Here is our second increase. Single crochet in the next four, and then go ahead and count on your own until you reach the stitch marker. Going into my last stitch here, we are gonna have 30 stitches at this point. Change your stitch marker. For around 11 and 12, you're gonna single crochet in the next 30 stitches. So go ahead and crochet around 11 and 12 single crochets, and we'll meet back at the end of round 12 for a color change. Working into our last stitches of round 12, we're gonna go into our last stitch. We're gonna yarn over and pull through. When we have two loops on the hook, I'm just gonna place this piece down Grab my gray yarn and make a knot around the white. Pull that gray piece down. Get set up with your work with the gray. Hold that back. Yarn over and pull through. So that's our color change. Change your stitch marker. For round 13, we are gonna start our decreasing. So we are gonna do one decrease, single crochet in the next four stitches, repeating this five times total. Here is our first decrease. Single crochet in the next four stitches. You can cut this white yarn off and just tuck that in at this point. Okay, and we'll continue on with our second decrease single crochet in the next four stitches and then repeat counting to yourself a decrease single crochet in the next four until the end. Going into our last stitch of round 13, you will have 25 stitches. For round 14, we're gonna make one decrease, single crochet in the next three stitches, five times total. So decrease one, single crochet in the next three stitches, decrease two, single crochet in the next three and go ahead and count your decrease single crochet in the next three until the end. Going into our last stitch, you will end this round with 20 stitches. Change your stitch marker. We're gonna start to stuff the body a bit, so go ahead and leave yourself some slack and then secure your working yarn. We're gonna grab a little bit of stuffing and we're gonna stuff each foot first and make sure that we get enough stuffing in those feet. 
and then you can place a little bit in your body. Don't make your body really tight just yet because we're going to add more stuffing after we crochet a few more rounds. So we're almost done with the body. We have a few more rounds to go. So take out your extra stitch marker and we're going to continue on to round 15. Round 15, we're going to make one decrease, single crochet in the next two stitches for five times total. Here is our first decrease. Single crochet in the next two stitches. Our second decrease. Single crochet in the next two and continue counting until the end of the round. Working our last stitch here, at the end of round 15, you're going to have 15 stitches. And here we are just going to finish up with round 16. So round 16 is one decrease, single crochet in the next three stitches, and we'll be doing this three times total. Here is our first decrease, single crochet in the next three stitches. Our second decrease, single crochet in the next three, and then make one more decrease and end with single crochets. We are finished with our body, so we're gonna leave a long tail for our assembly. I like to leave an extra long one because this will be attached to the head. Fasten off and pull your yarn through. We're just gonna add a little bit more stuffing to our body. Once you are happy with your stuffing, go ahead and place this body to the side and we'll continue with the arms next. Moving on to the arms, I just want to mention that we're not going to be adding stuffing to the arms, so don't worry about that. We're going to get started with a magic circle in our gray color. We're going to make four single crochet into a magic circle, so do that however you'd like. You can make a slip knot, chain two, and make four single crochet into your second chain from the hook. For round two, we are gonna make one increase and then we're gonna make a single crochet and we're just gonna do this two times. Here's our first increase. A single crochet in the next stitch. Our second increase. and our single crochet. It gets a little tougher when the stitches get smaller, but we got this. Change your stitch marker. You'll have six stitches at this point. You can tighten up that middle. For round three, we're gonna increase in the first stitch, single crochet in the next two, two times. Here is increase one. Single crochet in the next two. increase two, single crochet in the last two. You will have eight stitches and make sure that you're turning your work back the right way because it wants to turn in on itself because we are working with smaller stitches. change your stitch marker and then for round four we're just going to single crochet all the way around for the next eight stitches. 
And we are almost there. We just have to make these two arms. And then we're going to start our assembly. And because we did our feet and our body in one piece, it's one less thing to attach, which is awesome. <laughs> okay, here is our last stitch. We still have our eight stitches. For round five, we're going to make a decrease and then single crochet in the next two stitches and we'll do this two times. Our first decrease, single crochet in the next two stitches. This gets a little tricky because it gets smaller here. So just go slow if you have to. Our second decrease, single crochet and then last two stitches. You have six stitches at this point. You can tuck in that middle piece of yarn so it'll get out of your way. You can use the back of your crochet hook, it's really helpful. Or you can use a pair of scissors too. From round six through eight, we are going to single crochet around six stitches. So go ahead and do that and we'll meet back at the end of round eight. We're going into our last stitch here. Go ahead and take out your stitch marker, leave a long tail and give that a cut. We're gonna fasten off. And then once again, I like to sew my open-ended pieces. So I'm gonna tuck that piece in by going through my stitch, oops, going into my stitch right next to my last stitch, pulling that in. And then I'm just gonna go through two or three stitches. And again, you don't have to do this. It just makes it easier for me when I'm doing my assembly. Go ahead and rewind the video back to the arm and make one more and then we'll start assembly. We're so close to the finish line here. Go ahead and grab your head and some pins. I like to use these pins with the little balls on the end. You can use something like these heart pins as well. Grab your ears. We are going to place our ears between round three and four and round eight and nine. This is just a guideline. You don't have to place it on these rows. It's just what I have in my pattern. So I'm gonna count between round three and four and I'm gonna place a pin. And then I'm gonna count between round eight and nine. I'm gonna do the same thing on the other side. And this is just like a rough guide to see how my ears would look in these spots. So you may have to move things around once you see what it looks like. I want to have my ear have like a little indentation. So I'm just going to, when I attach it, I'm going to make it look like it's a little indented in, if that makes sense. I'm going to pin this in place and then I'm going to place my other ear and see if that one looks even. Once you have your ears in place and you think you're happy with the placement, go ahead and grab one of your yarn tails and weave it into your yarn needle. From here with my ear, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go through a stitch of the head. I'm gonna take out those corner pins. I'm gonna go through a stitch of the head here, pull it all the way through. I'm going to take out all of my pins because I want to show you, give you a better look at what I'm doing. Okay, so once I go through one side of the head, I'm just going to pull through the other side of the head and then I'm going to go through a stitch of the ear. Once you have that tight, go ahead and grab another stitch underneath the head, pull that through, and then go through a stitch of the ear. 
And I swear I attach things differently each time. I, if I went back to another video to see how I attached my ear, I might do it a tad bit different. Do what feels comfortable to you. If you have a particular way that you attach your pieces, do whatever works for you. Just have fun with it and don't stress. Now I'm going through a piece of the ear again. And then I usually like to go through one more corner piece of my ear, even though there's not really a stitch there. I just like to grab onto a piece. So I'm going to go underneath my head and then I'm going to grab this little corner bit here because I like those corner pieces to be against the head and not sticking out. So it's a little difficult to get through here. So I'm just going to work my way through that stitch and this one was tough. Then I'm going to pull through and that helps to kind of pull that corner piece down. I like to make a knot after each piece. So go ahead and grab a piece of yarn, the same color, just any piece, and then you're going to make a loop. You want to put your yarn needle behind the loop and then pull taut. You're going to make a knot and the knot doesn't have to be up against the ear. It can be loose because we're going to weave in our yarn and it pulls that that little bit of knot right through to the head. Weave your yarn through the head and then cut off the extra piece when you're done. We're gonna do the same exact thing on the other side. I'm gonna fast forward this a bit so that the video doesn't take extra long, but just do the same going through the head and going through the ear as we did before. Okay, now that we're both attached, both ears are attached and they look great, we're going to put the body on next. In my pattern, it says to attach the body between round 18 and 19 of the head. And this is just a guideline, so we're going to just mark round 18 and 19 with a bunch of pins. Once you have those pins in place, you can place your body and see what it, how it looks. Now, the stitches that we had left on our body are a lot smaller than where my pins are. So what I like to do is grab a piece of my body and just pull it out as far as I can. I'm not going to be able to reach that round 18 and 19 this time around. Maybe if I had crocheted a little looser, I could, but I'm just going to pull it out as much as I can. If we don't pull out your stitches a little bit, the head might end up being a little bit floppy. So I'm just going to take my pin, go underneath the stitch, and just pull, pull that stitch out to meet my pin. It feels awkward and you're probably wondering why are you making your body so small and your head <laughs> so big, but it's just the look that I love. So kind of have to do a little bit of the work just to get the look that you like. Once you have your pins in place, you just want to make sure that your body is centered always because I have definitely made like bodies that were off center and it looks a little funny. So just do your best. Once you're all set, weave your yarn tail into your needle. To get started, we're going to go under a stitch of the head. Pull that all the way through and then you're gonna go underneath two stitches of the body. Making sure to go under both loops because if you just grab one, it may just not be secure enough. So you can grab one stitch, 
I sometimes grab two stitches of the head, but I always just grab one stitch of the body. So going under two loops, one stitch of the body. And then pull that tight. Again, I'm going underneath a stitch of the head. And then I'm going underneath a stitch of the body. So we're gonna continue this all the way around and then we will make a knot when we reach the end of the body. Make sure as you are continuing to connect the, the body to the head that you give a check-in once in a while just to make sure that your body didn't go off center. You just wanna make sure that everything looks okay. So every few stitches, flip them up, check them out, and then continue on with your work. I am reaching back to the beginning, so I am gonna grab a stitch of my head. Things look a little jumbled here, but grab your last stitch of the body, and then you're gonna pull that through and you're gonna go slow and make a loop. Place your yarn needle behind the loop, and then you can make a knot. And then you wanna weave in this piece really well. Okay, so our body is in place, our ears are here, we are almost looking alive, we just need our arms, and then we're ready to go. Grab your arms, you are gonna place them in between the head and the body. It's gonna go right in that little space there. When I attach my arms, I like to attach the bottom because I need that top open so I can see my stitches. So I place them right below the eye, sort of at a tiny angle, and then you can grab your yarn needle and weave one of the arm tails through. I'm gonna pick up one of those gray stitches and I like to start more towards the middle of the body. So I'm gonna grab that middle stitch. Sorry, I'm a little off camera here. And then I'm gonna go underneath two stitches of the arm and I'm gonna pull tight. Then I'm gonna grab another stitch between the head and the body. And then I'm gonna go underneath two stitches of the arm. So I usually only attach like two, maybe three stitches, but mostly two because here I'm gonna show you a little trick that I do. I'm gonna move over a little bit between the head and the body, and then I'm gonna go up through the arm because I wanna catch like that corner stitch. You're gonna pull it through, and when you pull it through, go slow. You're gonna make that little loop, and then you're gonna go behind the loop and then pull that tight. And that's gonna make a knot, but it's also gonna keep your arm really secure. So weave your yarn tail through, and then we're gonna attach our other arm. And there you have it, Poppy the Panda is done. You can either leave her like this or you can add a flower headband or just a few flowers in her ear. 
I have a separate video on this flower, so I will link that down below and you can make those. I just made those in a sport weight yarn with a C hook so that they were smaller and that's it. For Thanks. joining me on this crochet along, if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and please subscribe for more crochet alongs and crochet tutorials coming up. Don't forget to go to yarnsociety.com for free crochet patterns.